thought it might be worthwhile for me to spend some time talking about uh, the kind of choices you have when it comes to medium format gear and why you might choose one thing over another. This is 120 or medium format film. Sometimes it's also called two and a quarter. And if you compare this to 35 millimeter, you can see already there's a height difference. So you're, you're getting some size difference in this dimension. It's a little more difficult to show it, but you're also, depending on the camera you shoot, you're going to get a lot more um, horizontal dimension as well. I'm going to go in order of uh, sort of my history with medium format. When I got the medium format bug, I kind of thought uh, maybe I should start with a medium format rangefinder. So that's what I did. Um, I shopped around quite a bit and decided that I was going to get myself a Fuji GW. They have three series of these cameras. Fuji makes a lot of medium format cameras. Um, the GWs are rangefinders, and uh, they make them in multiple widths, meaning the width of the exposed frame varies. I decided to go for a 690, and the reason I did that is because that's consistent with um, the ratio that a, uh, a 35 millimeter frame is. A pretty darn big camera, as you can see here. I mean, this is how big it is. We kind of laughed when I got this thing at work and opened it up. Um, anyway, like I was saying, the, the quality is amazing. The uh, aperture and shutter controls, since it has a, a in-the-lens shutter, the shutter control is up here on the lens, uh, coincident with the uh, aperture control. This is not an interchangeable lens camera. This is a 90 millimeter lens on this guy. There are very early editions of this camera. I don't think they were called GWs. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think they were GBs. Um, those so the Fuji's great, um, but I wanted to try something a little more portable. And since I liked the Fuji a lot, uh, I decided to try one of their more automated cameras, which uh, actually kind of has a retractable lens. Um, I've got a hood on this. So this is a 6x4.5. Remember the, the GW, the camera I was just holding up, was a 6x9. So this shoots the same film, but a narrower, actually a vertical format. Instead of 6x9, it shoots 6x4.5, and, and results in a much more compact camera. A lot of the reason for that is because the lens retracts. This camera is really easy to carry. It's really easy to slip into a bag. Um, so this camera is a lot different than the um, GW690 in that it has some automation. I'm going to turn it on here, and uh, you'll uh, see that the land extends a little bit. This actually has a very short zoom lens on it. Pretty narrow zoom range, but um, that's a lot better than no zoom range at all. So um, the other thing that this camera has that the uh, GWs don't have is it's got auto exposure, which comes in handy. Uh, I don't mind shooting manual. I, I like shooting manual, honestly. I just take a light meter, take a reading, and if the light doesn't change much, I just keep shooting. I don't worry about the shutter speed or aperture. Um, with a camera like this, this has aperture priority uh, auto exposure. It works pretty well. Uh, I've used it most of the time I've shot it. Occasionally I'll put it on manual uh, if I want to do a panorama or something like that, or if it's a, a really uh, tough shooting situation. But generally the metering works well. It's also autofocus. This camera is basically a giant point and shoot. It winds the film on practically by itself. Uh, when you load it, it, it winds it up just like a 35mm SLR, a, a motor-driven one would do. Um, so in terms of convenience, uh, it's, it's great. Uh, packability, it's great. Um, but you got to live with a 6x4.5 uh, negative, which is the smallest format of medium format there is. Um, so it's still like three times the size of a 35 millimeter negative. Um, so you get plenty of quality, it's just not extreme like the 6x9. So after putting in my time with the other cameras, um, I decided I wasn't going to wait any longer to get a Hasselblad. So uh, I got a pretty good deal on this on a photography forum. This is a 500cm, it was made in 1986. Um, so Hasselblad is sort of more like the Fuji 690 in the sense that there's no automation in this thing. 
you wind your own film, you do your own focusing, you do your own exposure setting, it's all manual. There's not a battery in this camera, nor is there one in the Fuji GW. Um, so it's, it's simple in that sense. It's actually a fairly complicated and um, sophisticated camera. The basic design has been this way uh, for a very long time. And the amazing thing is, is it's really um, shown that the design has staying power. So what's nice about a Hasselblad uh, 500 series is it's modular. These other cameras, you can't change a thing on But you can change lenses on a Hasselblad. And uh, like so. You can also change the backs. A Hasselblad shoots a square image as opposed to a 6x9 or 6x5. So if you have multiple backs, the film goes into this. If you have multiple backs, you don't have to shoot up a roll before you move on to the next roll. You just swap in another back that has the film that you want to shoot in it. It also works for the case where you just want to quickly, you know, you've used up your, your roll, you've got another one loaded, you slap it on, there's no fiddling around with loading. Um, let me just demonstrate this. You can also change the finders. So this finder slides off. You can put a prism on it. They have multiple prism types. That just slides right in there. I have the, the uh, protector on the bottom, so I'm not going to bother with it. That slides right on. gives you uh, almost like a traditional 35mm SLR handling. So you, you have a lot of flexibility on the finder. The finder is a little different. I like to shoot with this waist level finder. This pops up like this. and. Um, you look down into it. It's kind of slick about this camera if you use the waist level finder is it feels like you're looking at the photograph. Um, that sounds kind of obvious but it seems even more like that on a camera like this with a waist level finder because you're looking at the uh, image from a distance and you see it in this square and it's you know in, in the right conditions very bright and it's just like wow that's that's my photo. So what camera should you shoot? Well, I think that depends on your needs. Um, if you need modularity, if you feel like you want to mount different lenses, like I have a, uh, this is an 80 millimeter on here. Uh, I have a 60 millimeter, which is a moderately wide lens. Uh, if you want to change lenses, you're going to want a Hasselblad. Um, there are range finders. Um, as I mentioned, like the older Fuji that has interchangeable lenses, if you want that. Um, Mamiya makes really nice range finders that have interchangeable lenses. They're a lot more expensive than the Fujis. Um, they really have held their value and I think Mamiya actually may still make them. So um, that's another option if you want a range finder. If you want to go out and, so both of these cameras are manual, these two guys right here. Um, if you don't want to shoot full manual all the time, consider getting one of Fuji's automated cameras. There are other GAs. This is a GA645ZI. We've got a quite, a, quite a few 645 models. Look around on the web and you'll, you'll see. And uh, they're pretty affordable. So if you want some automation, you want something fairly affordable, um, and you don't mind shooting the smaller negative, which is still much larger than a 35mm negative, look at one of these Fuji's. There's one more old school um, design and that's called a twin lens reflex. Um, I don't have one of those or I would show it. Um, if you go, uh, there's there's videos on YouTube. One guy has a really nice video about his TLRs. Um, I'll try to post a uh, link or even put a little thing that you can click on to go to the site in, in the video. Um, and since I'm thinking of that, there's, there's a guy that has a really nice video about the operation of the Hasselblad uh, V-Series or 500 series camera and I'll also point to that and hopefully with one of those little boxes you can click on. I hope this discussion uh, made some sense. As I said at the beginning, I don't really plan these things out. I just sort of pull out the cameras and uh, jabber. Um, so if you have any questions, comment and I'll respond. And uh, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.